Good morning, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens, I'm in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Today we are going, what's, uh, okay, what's amazing about Rio is that it's a city that's like just packed with nature. From beaches, the mountains, immediately as you arrive here, you notice the landscapes and the jungle. Today we're gonna go to what is the largest urban rainforest. It's still within Rio, within the city, in the world. We're gonna do a little bit of hiking to the Telegraph Rock, but mainly, our mission is to eat seafood because around the park there is some famous, there's a very famous well-known seafood restaurant. It's about an hour drive from the center of the city, but we're not leaving Rio at all. We're in Rio and we're on our way. Okay, oh ouch. We drove for about 45 minutes and the coast of Brazil in Rio de Janeiro, it's unbelievably beautiful. The, like just kilometer after kilometer of pristine beach. And then we drove kind of into the mountain. Now we're getting pretty close to the destination, into the forest. And we just stopped. There is a man that serves fresh oysters on the side of the road that Gelherme has been coming to since he was a kid. We're gonna have some oysters for breakfast first thing. Bom dia. Bom dia. Bom dia. Paramos aqui na hoje no seu 9, 10. Então quando estiver vindo para cá, vem aqui. Just a pile of fresh oysters that he gets from right here, from right here from the like possibly the brackish water from the lagoons right around here. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, really, it's not about the size of the oyster. Sometimes the smaller oysters have the best flavor. Oh, that's wonderful. It is salty, not even that slimy, with that squeeze of lime to balance the saltiness. And you can just chuck them on the ground here. He has a cat that will lick them up. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Delicious. Really like amazing flavor. Muito obrigado. We are now starting the hike up to Telegraph Point uh, because it's named after that because of uh, some kind of a military meaning um, when they used to call and telegraph. But anyways, we're on the hike. It shouldn't take too long, but the view is going to be spectacular. If I didn't own the heat, I would hike. Like really big hike. We need the exercise yes. <laughs> so badly. We've been eating so much food. Cool. I God. love hiking. Falou que ama caminhar. It feels so good to get a little exercise, kind of scrambling up the, the side of the hill. I got you. Okay, beginning to sweat just profusely. Uh, says Sign says one kilometer. This little fence. Oh. Oh, That's stuck. <laughs> okay, so no motorcycles can get up here. Yeah. <laughs> the views of the bay are just gorgeous. Oh, um, this is a wonderful, wonderful hike. made it to the very top. I think the original telegraph is over there, but the most well-known landmark because of photos is right down there. But I'm telling you, that sweat, that is no joke. That is just dripping. I could wring my shirt out right now. Okay, let's go see that rock. Bonjour. Bonjour. Tá bom, valeu, Ignacio. 
That view is absolutely spectacular. The coast all the way facing Rio, just the coastline, the crashing waves, the white water, the greenery of the mountains and the peaks. You can see giant like hawks just swooping in. And let me just show you the most famous thing about this attraction. And we're not even gonna have a chance to do this because there's a line of like a hundred people. But check this out, everybody's waiting in line. There is a rock and you can see them right there. If you take the photo in the right position, it looks like you are just hanging off of a cliff. But you can see the whole behind the scenes here. They even have a, a light reflector for the serious photographers. You get down there, you take the photo there, you take the person sitting on the rock ledge there, and it looks just like you are on the cliff edge. You, people do all, it's, it's like a hugely famous place where people do all sorts of trick photography where they hang off, where they really look like they're on the edge of a cliff just over nothing. Uh, but nevertheless, it is absolutely like magnificently spectacular and worth every single step to get here. Edme is over there like an official photographer. <laughs> yes, he's the man. Ciao. What is the name of this place? The name of the place is Guguchi. That's the restaurant. That's the restaurant. And then the city or the area? The area called Vargem Grande. Vargem Grande. Grande. Which is and like uh, the west side of Rio. Uh, yeah, we're still in Rio here, yeah. but that was like a 30 minute drive yeah. from the from the Telegraph Rock. Uh, but it's beautiful here. This is the seafood restaurant. We're here to eat seafood. The grounds are gorgeous. The place is gorgeous. We're about to meet the owner and we're gonna have some seafood here. Love this style of a restaurant. They have this expanded seat section where we're gonna sit. Um, but then this is like part of the property, part of the house, and then his own house is within this restaurant property as well. We're gonna go back to the kitchen now. The grounds, pizza oven, what a, what a property. He's in the back. In the back, cool. Yeah, and then we're going And then we're gonna go check out the kitchen real fast. Oh, along with seafood, they're also very no, real well known for their beef ribs and they have this amazing metal smoker grill. The ribs cook for 16 hours. They're just like ultra, ultra tender, just bubbling in their juices. Good job, Micah. Whoa, be careful, hold on. When you're in Brazil, Prata, that's like the best water. I mean, it's just water, but it, you can taste the difference. And then Marcelo has also, what's up? So nice to meet you. So Marcelo, he is the man. And we just saw the full kitchen, but he really wanted to set a table outside. So he's preparing to cook at this table right here outside. It's gonna be very cool. Very soon he's gonna start cooking. But the main dish that he is gonna be cooking is the moqueca, which is a, a stew. It can be made with other seafood, but traditional is fish. Now there are two versions of moqueca in Brazil. Um, one version comes from a state called Espirito Santo, which is the version he's gonna be making. Uh, but then there's another version from the state of Bahia, Salvador, uh, which we'll try later on in the trip. It's a kind of a, a dispute which one is the best one. I'm pretty sure they're both delicious, but we will find out what we'll have later in this trip in Brazil. We'll be visiting Bahia, visiting Salvador. Uh, but this one is gonna be the Espirito Santo version. Um, and his father, his family was from Espirito Santo. It's a Cherny. 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 Cool. It's a, the best one fish to that's the local Make name. First goes on some lime juice to that fish. That fish is very meaty, a white meat ocean fish that looks really, really good. Very cool. It's like our own private chef class learning to make moqueca. 
Maybe it's like, not totally I'll, sure what I'll, the English name is. We'll, we'll look up the English name, but it's kind of yeah. like a, and here goes in some more. He's adding in that, it's like a red coloring, orange red coloring, not a lot of flavor, not chili, but mostly for the color, for the, the feel of the dish. And that's just kind of like, he's gonna simmer that in the oil for a little bit, saute that in the oil. Like a bed. Agora é o coentro, é a uma pimenta da casa, ó. Well, then he added in some onions, then some tomatoes, then some cilantro, and then some of the house, his own chili sauce that he makes. Um, what's key about this dish is the method, the process, the way he adds the ingredients. And then the fish goes directly onto that bed of tomatoes and onions and spices. And then he adds on a whole nother layer of the same ingredients, a whole layer over the fish, the onions, the tomatoes, the cilantro. Because the fish is so delicate, you don't want to just flip the fish or turn the fish, so he uses a towel and just kind of shakes everything so that that stirs the bottom, that uh, takes off everything stickable from the bottom. We just looked up that red um, ingredient added and it's called, it's, it's called uruka? Uruka. Uruku. It's called uruku. It's a native, um, like a little, almost like a berry with a, with a red pigment. Um, that can also be used on the skin, but also is used to color food. I think I did have this in South America before. Cool, thank you. So the cover goes on now, so that's gonna sort of bake, steam, and fully cook all the way through. And this table has a lot of character too with the yellow, with the painting color. This meal is unbelievably spectacular. He just like mastered the moqueca, which is the main dish served in the clay pot and cooked in the clay pot. Yes. What else do we have? We have the ribs. The, we have to get a close-up look. <laughs> That's like, that has to be like 10 kgs of ribs. And I bet you could just pull out that entire bone and it would just like, it would just jiggle. And then also another dish that we got is the... Octopus rice. Octopus rice. And this vegetable, is it that, is it um, watercress? I think it's watercress, I, so. I can even smell it. Simmered down with onions, I believe that's watercress. And then just chunks of, chunks of the octopus. It smells so good. But we have to begin with the main dish, the moqueca. That just like, that's just like straight tomatoes and onions and cilantro with that oil, with the fish, with the, the pigment. I love how it still remains chunky. I'm gonna get some of the, some of that fish. Fish itself is just such a, you can tell it's such a high quality, such a fresh fish. And he is a fisherman too. Delicioso. This is what it comes down to, the moqueca first. It is, it just looks like refreshing, like that stew with the tomatoes, with the onions. Mm. Mm. Oh wow. Look, what I love about it is it focuses so much on the fresh fish. Like the seasonings. The tomatoes, the onions, the seasonings are light. Mm -hmm. Not like overly powerful, overly over strong. You cannot cover up the freshness yes. of that fish. And that's what like stands out to me. It is amazingly fresh, amazingly delicious. I'll add a little more of their house chili sauce on here. 
And I'm gonna add a little bit of the pirao, which is another staple. The pirao, which is, it's a cassava paste, but you see those little strands. Normally it's plain, but this one, they add the fish head, they boil it with the fish head, so you can see those little strands. That's gonna have extra fish flavor, and you typically eat this along with the rice, as well as with the farofa, which is the dry fried uh, cassava powder. Mm. Mm. The pirao is delicious. Like it almost looks like pureed pumpkin, but it kind of has a sticky gummy texture. Flavorful from the fish broth. And then the farofa here almost has like a, a peanutty flavor to it. That's delicious, plus a little crunch to it. Mm. The actual stew is superb, but the freshness and like meatiness of that fish, that's what stands out to me. That is incredibly delicious. Fried polenta, which is another side. Mm. I believe it's made from corn. Wow, that's really crispy, salty. Okay, now I'm gonna try some of the octopus rice, little pieces of octopus, plus the watercresses. And I actually could smell the watercress. I didn't even, you can smell the watercress, it's so distinct, plus you can see onions in there, plus all the, all the rice. Okay, let's try that. Octopus rice, get a piece of the octopus, get some of that vegetable. Immediately, I can tell that is watercress, and I love the flavor of watercress. It has this like slight bitterness, but this green taste, kind of like spinachy, the leaves, but then for me, it has much more of a complexity of flavor than spinach. And just a personal note, it immediately reminds me of my grandmother in Hawaii, because she used to cook watercress every single night. I remember growing up eating watercress uh, whenever we're at my grandmother's house in Hawaii. She would cook it, and literally from the smell, from the taste, I immediately think of my grandmother. That rice is amazing though, with the tender pieces of octopus, the watercress, the onions, the rice just kind of like holds it together. Oh man, the octopus rice is amazing, huh? And he's cooking the banana stew. He's cooking one more dish? Mo moqueca de banana da terra. Awesome. And we haven't even started on the ribs yet. Plantation de banana. And the banana is from here, okay? The banana is from here. Is it yeah. a sweet banana? Or kind is of it like sweet like... banana, yeah. Okay, so one more dish that we just got that just came out of the kitchen hot and fresh, bubbling away. It's moqueca with banana. So it's the same, looks like the same recipe with the tomatoes, with the onions, with the cilantro and the layers, but then with banana from this region. Uh, from here, this place is tons of bananas around here. It's another another version. Uh, it just smells so refreshing, so fresh, so so natural. Oh, oh, banana. Don't do what I just did. Take a boiling hot piece of banana in your mouth at once. That just holds in the heat. That's flaming hot, but that's incredibly delicious. I love the banana version because those are actually not like, they're not like the starchy, unsweet banana, those are sweet bananas. Oh. So you've got that contrast of the sweet banana, still a little bit starchy, it's a banana, then with the saltiness of the onions, of those tomatoes, the, the tartness of the tomatoes, the cilantro in there, incredibly delicious, I love the banana. It's not even a real knife. Yeah, really. Yeah, It's like a piece of lasagna. 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 It's like a plate of lasagna, yeah. Marcelo said that feeds four, but that's like, it literally has to be like a 10 kilo piece of beef ribs cooked for 16 hours, and he just sliced it. He gave me a piece. Go about. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, wow. 
wow. That almost tastes like corned beef. So soft, it's so fatty, it's so jiggly, it's so like, like salted all the way through and then the skin outside is so crispy. My entire plate is just still covered. An entire plate of meat. You can just eat the meat by the fistful. And it tastes really like it's been salted all the way through. Almost has a ham smoked, it does have a smoked taste to it, but like hammy. Add a few of these chilies to the next bite. There's just so much meat. Oh wow. This restaurant is amazing though. Marcelo and his brother and his entire family, they took care of us. What I love about this restaurant is that it is, it's really laid back, but it's gourmet, like highest end seafood and ribs in a very nice location. And it's still fam completely family run. Um, there's other cooks as well. Marcelo isn't always cooking, but it is family run. It is family operated. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And it's, it's amazing to me that we never left Rio de Janeiro. I wanna say a big thank you to Marcelo, to everyone here at the restaurant for helping, for taking care of us. Uh, to Guilherme and Rafaela from Rio for Fun and Rio for Food. I'll leave their links in the description box below. And then also, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe now. We're gonna be traveling all around Brazil, uh, learning about the food, learning about the culture, the diversity of food in Brazil. It's gonna be an amazing trip. I'll have the link in the description box. You can check out, watch the entire playlist, all the Brazil food and travel videos. Towards the end of our trip, we're gonna be going to Bahia, Salvador de Bahia, uh, where we're gonna try their version of moqueca, which is the same name dish, but a totally different style using coconut milk and dende oil, which is palm oil. So that's coming up. Uh, but make sure you check out this entire series. I wanna say a huge thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Oh, my arm got tired. And if you're not already subscribed, again, click subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Thanks again for watching. See you on the next video.